recording. Cool. So this is Rock Flesh at Bloodstock 2022. Um, we're doing a bit of kind of guerrilla filming here. <laughs> Look who we bumped into. It's uh, Gavin McAnally, the brains, the heart behind the operation of uh, Damnation Festival. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I like the introduction. Thank you very much. Well, that's, you know, it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, so, got here yesterday, I believe. I did get in time just for beam off, who we were fucking excellent, and then sleep talking last night, who were also excellent. So, I, it's been so good. So far, so good. And uh, what we've got today? We've got a bunch of stuff. We've got to see Mastiff, Pupil Slicer, Cage Fight, check out a wee bit of Lorna Shore. And then what's happening later on? Malevolence headline in the tent. Oh yes. Sounds good. Yeah, malevolence will be awesome as they always are. So anyway, we're not talking about Bloodstock. We're not here to talk about Bloodstock. <laughs> Damnation Festival. Yes. So this year an absolutely stunning lineup. Um, you've got some amazing bands. Just just okay, let's make it difficult. If there's only three bands at the festival people cannot miss. Three bands at right. Damnation Festival. Okay, so I'm a big post rock fan, which is it goes against the green at Damnation a wee bit. I know it's like the it's like the left will say, but we lost the sea playing for the first time in the UK. They come yeah. across to Australia, so if you're a post rock fan, if you like the likes of maybe she will, Alcest, Boss, God, these kind of bands, it's pushing the sky. We lost to see making their debut at Damnation. It's going to be fucking spectacular. Uh, the other side of the scale, Pig Destroyer, haven't they been back in how well, long? We have we booked them in 2012. Yeah. So I mean, it'll be 10 years since they played the UK. That's going to be an amazing headline in their stage, so that's going to be an incredible set. And then Converge, you know what I mean? That's, and there's a lot of bands I love in that lineup, but those three are like, don't, don't miss, don't miss those three. Stellar, stellar lineup. Uh, and um, how, how are the ticket sales going? Because of course you've moved uh, venue as good, well. Good, so. well, we're currently towards the 4,000 mark at the minute. It's like fucking, which is incredible for Damnation. Yeah, yeah. We, we passed that 4,000 mark, that's the most, uh, it's the most sales Damnation's ever done. So, and we're in. August, July, we're up there, we? August, uh, right. August yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we do the most sales traditionally in the last six to eight weeks, yeah. so yeah, oh, fuck, I mean, we could sell it, we yeah, could yeah. Sell it in which yeah. would be, I mean when we first put this line up together, I remember I was talking to like quite a big agent at the time, and he's saying look that line up's never going to do 6,000 sales, and I'm like, We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so here we are now. Who knows? I, I don't count any. I don't count any ticket sale no. until it's black and white in front of me. Got I you. don't. I don't take any for granted. So, yeah. um, where we're as well, like it's good. Like four thousand people at Damnation will yeah. be will be packed, but six thousand people at Damnation will be spectacular. So did the venue change come first, or the lineup? If you see what I mean. So did the lineup drive the venue change a little bit? Would it be such a stellar lineup? Did, the, um, the change in venue came from a year on year of watching fans not getting into small stages. So that's been a that's been a we sell out and have sold out since yep. 2016. But what happens with Damnation fans is they show up at noon and they want to see every band, they want to see the Inferno C, they want to see June, they want to see Boss Kellogg. So they don't show up to see Opeth, they show up to see everyone. Exactly. And what happens with that is if a stage get 600 capacity and 601 people went in somebody's left unhappy so that I, we watched that last year with party cannon with june with man must I, like you could not get into some of the stages you're like that's enough enough for this because we're having great events that people um get the full experience from it yeah. sounds fucking american and wanky um, <laughs> So we need something bigger. Yeah. And my fear is that actually when we go into this, like the third stage is now almost the equivalent of our main stage. Yeah. And I think some people get locked at that exactly. and we'll have the same problem. Wow. But yeah. at well, least at that point, it's not a 600 capacity dungeon at the bottom certainly. where the Inferno C playing to their biggest fucking audience ever. Yeah. It's 1500. And if you can't get yourself in the room for 1500 people, then you know, there's only so much you can do. Exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Totally. Well, I went on to Outbreak Fest this yes. year um, at the same venue and um, yeah I, th I think it's a really really good venue really works for this kind of you know kind of setup um, I presume you're having barriers at the front not the no barrier hardcore thing, <laughs> well, you know, it's so we, had to, little, we had to sign away our lives basically <laughs> so we didn't mind dying yeah yeah we had these little gold wristbands it was crazy but. Aye, so, ba <laughs> so basically we ended up quite partly with, uh, with the guys from from Outbreak and they were a wee bit a guinea pig for us because the big issue with bowls is, as people know it from Manchester, is it's a rave event for the 80s. 
So yeah. it, it's no metal. Yeah. I mean, we had a bit of a fear about, oh, how's it going to sound? How's it going to be? Yeah. So, Outbreak went, it was spectacular. Really good, really like, good sound. Everybody loved fact, it. Yeah. We've got yeah. the same production, Marios. Oh, We've got the same guy coming in, bringing the same sort of expertise to the, the venue. And I ultimately, I forget what your question was, but the <laughs> ultimately. <laughs> I, mean, I know, we never dealing questions, we're just dealing in China, I think. But, but, yeah. but <laughs> Outbreak went well, and the only thing that stopped us being at Outbreak we were at Hellfest at the time. Uh, but it went so well. It was, it was a real buzz about the fact that how the reaction was because it was yep. transport concerns. They seemed to get like everybody get back for the outbreak. That was yeah. a complete sellout for fucking four days. Everybody get back for the outbreak. Sound concerns. Everybody enjoyed the yep. center. The barriers are what you're asking about. Yes. yes. Ministry will not allow a <laughs> set to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they put a fence yeah, up front, did. they put a fucking fence up, don't they? I mean, yeah. They're not going to let yeah. fucking fan, Big Al like that, come on, big man! <laughs> you basically got people two stepping across the stage, the right. ministry, it's like, so, never I'd love, yeah. I, I, I'm half kidding, because the mojo barriers are expensive as fuck, yeah. so I'm, I'm half considered on the third stage, the doom stage. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one is two stepping to Paul Bearer, no. I'll be honest to see. <laughs> so I'm a bit like, could that, could that go without a barrier? Possibly get a, bit, a, a few more fans in that stage, but even still, the health and safety plan will take that whether yeah. we can or we can't. So exactly. we'll see, but uh, there'll be barriers. Perfect. And that main stage, there will be a barrier. Yes, there's got to be, there's got to be. So, how far in advance do you plan for, like, say, next year's one? I know we've not even got past, past this one yet, but um, is that something you're constantly working ahead of? Definitely for? a year in advance. It's good. Well, the pandemic made things weird because what had happened is long before Damnation 2021. Yep. Happened. We already knew, like, Convergent Ministry, they bands are all booked for the year that's coming. Yep. And then I had an agent get in touch with me this week to say, meet up with us to chat about next year's headliners at Bloodstock. So there's definitely that. It used to be it used to be six months. You would, you would book yeah. bands and uh, it started getting, now it's, it's definitely a year plus. I don't know if that's because everybody we just had nothing to do for two years. So <laughs> it just kind of, we started working in like the years yeah. ahead or if that was the case, uh, that's where it'll be now. But ultimately, when you, when you get to Damnations level, definitely when you get beyond that to Bloodstock and download, these kind of bands, they book 24 months in advance. Yeah. They have sure. their full plan. So it, yeah, there's, there's definitely bands you can pick up in a week's notice. And there's definitely bands like Ministry you pick up in a year plus notice, so it's a, it's a mix, but definitely well, I'm planning 2023 now yeah. to answer that question. Yeah, 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 perfect. Oh, it is one of these things, isn't it, actually? I, mean, I think we used to see it a lot with, say, stand-up comedians would, like, kind of book their tours, like, almost like yeah. two years in advance, yeah. kind of but bands might be kind of a bit like, oh, we're going to tour in a few months, whereas now, I think we're seeing not just the knock-on delays from the pandemic, but also just people seem to be planning a lot. Yeah, further yeah. In it's advance. really because I've got a Kevin Bridges ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking forgot about it. I literally forgot about it. And it's like somebody said, it, remember, the remember on the 11th of September, I got to see Kevin Bridges. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking booked that ticket like when I was a wee boy in nappies. It was like fucking so long ago. So I exactly like that, that comedians, for whatever reason, have had that. And, and, the, and metal music is getting a wee bit, or maybe music in general, is getting a bit more... I but then I suppose... Uh, uh, there's, there's no downside to that. No, yeah. no. What, what I would say is when bands were all booked through the, the pandemic, we've seen a lot of pullouts across festivals, mm. and that's not necessarily because of COVID anymore. It's because bookings were made when when bands were saying, here's plan A two years ago, and plan A becomes the fucking plan Z, you know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. they're a bit like, we've changed management, we've changed management, we no longer want to go to Germany, or the money's not there, or the venue shut down. So well, I've seen a wee bit of that, that, I okay, maybe if you book your set two years in advance, maybe your drummer is going to leave his, and yeah. you'll no longer be a band, or maybe you don't want to go to the UK, or you have a kid, or, so there's, there's some, there's some pullouts from all festivals, including ourselves, we lost Toxic Holocaust because of that. They just basically, it didn't suit them anymore. Yeah. It just didn't suit them anymore. Yeah. So there's a, I, I suppose when you, you can't go too far in advance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that is a thing, isn't it? We've seen quite a lot with, especially the one day festivals, quite a lot of them having to like basically say, you know, shutting themselves down as it were, got like, quite last minute. I mean, as you said, that that's, Usually on ticket sales, isn't it? So, so that I guess that's why you need to push those ticket sales early, even though you say that kind of like six to eight weeks beforehand. I, absolutely, I'm a, I'm a wee bit obsessed with this issue because it's because of the knock on effect that it has in a damnation. Yeah. Is like you get these, everyone wants to start uh, promoting tomorrow and be damnation or uh, bloodstock in the worst case scenarios. Fucking downloads, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's not gonna work, that's just not gonna work. Yeah, there's 
these events are collapsing because there's no trust in them. And then when they collapse, that distrust builds up even more. Yeah. And then, but they get knocked off and people don't want to go to anything. Yeah. So you're seeing, you're seeing the Manor Fest bumping into the Dominion Fest bumping into the Revolution. Like, if, event after event, event just getting banned. And that, it, that's not a dig at them, that's just the examples yeah, no, no. of those three that. that Recently, you said that it. but that's a way back to old fest yeah. and temples and years back to Sam. Mm-hmm. And then the fans are like, you know what, fuck that, you know, you're, you're putting a ticket and the ticket's the ticket price, right? But you're putting fees, dodges, so most my booking fees for Rage Against the Machine. So your booking fees are gone, then your hotel cancellation that's gone. Yeah. You just booked all these off at work that need to be funded, but like it's too much. So uh, well, I like, know what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait till a week before it happens. And then, so, then, but the yeah. problem the week to before the arms is the promoters just shot themselves because yeah. they need another 700 exactly. ticket sales, and it does that. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle. I don't know how we we get out of it. I, I think there's there's definitely a knock on effect. People that have been stung, even in the more established events like uh, a damnation, a bloodstock, that they're like, you know what? I've lost so much money on these ticket sales. I'm just going to wait to the last yeah. minute, and that's it. Doesn't help anybody because we'll, see if damnation sales like we go until. Uh, post damnation this year mm-hmm. and we sell out in the day the lineup you're going to get for 2023 is definitely going to be better than the lineup you're going to get for 2023 if I'm panicking exactly. about ticket sales yeah. and about the budget and can we afford the sets that I can afford to pay for are going to be it's that symbiotic relationship isn't it with, uh, with, so, with hunters and everyone kind of pulling right. together but, but it works for damnation best because you do have that that core loyal Base, I guess. You know, I, I, so, exactly, but it's still, it's still but frightening. You, it's still frightening. And I mean, you, like, we've spent a long time building that up as well. Absolutely. And, that and, we, and we did, we did see through the. Um, in 2009, we lost. I lost 13,000 pound. I worked for a festival for a full year, and I lost 13,000 pound, and the festival went ahead. So you know, a bit like I've been through yeah. the take the loss in the chin. Sometimes you need that as well, because then fans will see the okay, well, 2009 wasn't really that busy, but it still happened. I bought my ticket, I booked my hotels, I got my holidays from work, and I went there. The promoter lost money. Ultimately, well, that's his fault because it, it, it's not a, it's a gamble. Yeah. You go to Paddy sure. Power and you put your £20 on and ask not to win. If Arsenal don't win, you don't get it because I'll take my £20 back, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like it was a bad idea. It's a bad, yeah, but yeah, there's yeah. too many promoters that are doing that and doing yeah. exactly that. Like, oh, I'm just going to fucking bet that I'm going to get 10,000 people to show up and yeah. 800 buy tickets go, I just want my bet back. Like, that's no, that's not an option. No, it's no, not an option. no. But well, let's not end on a negative. No, note. let's not let's end <laughs> on a positive note. Um, yeah, Dam- <laughs> Damnation Festival this year, absolutely awesome lineup. Still tickets available, as you say. Yes. But you know, it's, it's I think it's going to sell out. It's going to sell out with that kind of lineup. Um, it's the Bowlers Exhibition Centre, Manchester. What's the date? It is the fifth of November. Fifth of November. Okay. So. Uh, explosives. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been brilliant speaking to you, Gavin. Pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank you for your time, guys. I appreciate okay. that. Nice one. Cheers. <laughs>